What's going on, y'all? Welcome back to the channel. So, you already heard the news. Film is getting way too expensive next year. A couple big price hikes coming by Kodak, and there's really nothing you can do about it. So, one of the things I think we should all consider now is actually shooting some digital. And I know some might argue that film is actually not more expensive if you cost for inflation and some other things, but all I know is that it costs a lot of money to buy film, and you know, my options are starting to dwindle now, especially because film sells out so quickly. It's becoming pretty annoying. Wait, what? Yo, I'm trying to record a video here. Can you please stop? Nah, 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 nah. We don't shoot digital. I thought we were only film. What's going on? I'm not gonna answer that. All I know is there's some dope digital cameras out there. Why not use them? Hold on a second. You about to give up on film because of money? Why don't you use some of that YouTube money and go buy all the film you want? Really? You gonna keep on? Yeah, I'm gonna keep on. I'm tight, man. How are you gonna abandon all those negatives in the dark room for some SD cards and Photoshop? What's wrong with you? Get out. Let me guess. A Sony A9, Canon R5. What a surprise. Get out! Okay, okay, fine. Film is life. All right, so there's a couple reasons why I actually think it'd be a good idea for you to shoot some digital, even if you're a hardcore, diehard film photographer. I think the first and foremost reason, probably the most important reason, honestly, is gear. So there's a lot of really cool digital cameras that actually function and kind of, you know, have that similar feel to a lot of film cameras, especially some of the classic ones. So I think first off, you know, rangefinder cameras. I think there's so many fantastic digital rangefinder cameras that I personally have never messed with and I really want to, you know, such as the Fuji uh, rangefinder cameras, obviously Leicas. You know, these are things that are pretty cool and they're modern tech and there's some beautiful aspects to them. So why not touch those? Um, I never have, but I'm pretty excited to jump into that and see how it feels and kind of how that all works. There's actually another camera that I'm pretty intrigued by and it's the Ricoh series of point and shoot, you know, street photography cameras. I forget the exact models right now, but they just came out with a new one and I just love the form factor. The cameras are tiny and they're basically built around street photography. So the autofocus is very snappy and it's kind of tailored to the experience of shooting outside, you know, kind of running up on your subjects and moving quickly. That's pretty intriguing to me since that's how I enjoy doing street photography. And going back to rangefinders, I can use a lot of those classic lenses and still do a lot of zone focusing. So these are things you can't do with some digital cameras because the lenses don't have the markings on them, but uh, with some of the more classic lenses that you can um, adapt to some of these rangefinder cameras, you can do a whole lot of stuff. So that's all pretty exciting. And I think the other gear thing that's pretty cool is actually the medium format digital cameras. Um, I'm just curious how that look matches up with the medium format look on film. Cause you know, some of these digital cameras that are medium format actually don't have the same kind of image size that you would have on a medium format film camera, such as a six by four five. I think that's still bigger than most of the digital medium format cameras that are out there. Although I think phase one just came out with some monstrosity of a camera. I don't have enough money to rent that one or get it. So don't count on seeing that on this channel, but if somebody wants to send me one, I'm down. So yeah, I think gear is one of the most compelling reasons why you might wanna start messing around with digital cameras and potentially use that as an alternative to a lot of the things that you would do on a film camera. I think one of the biggest, most obvious things you can look at is the price of color film versus the price of color digital photography. And this can be argued left and right. People have done it. I don't wanna you know, be part of that argument because I just don't really have the patience for that. But you know, if you get yourself a pretty cheap digital camera, a used one, let's say, um, you can use that and shoot color all day long, as opposed to with film, you're gonna have to keep buying and buying film. Again, you can do the math, but I think for some people it might make sense, especially if you shoot a whole lot of color film and you know, you travel a lot, vacations, all that kind of stuff. Um, color digital photography would be a really nice way to offset some of that, especially if you can find a camera like the ones we mentioned before that you might actually enjoy using. Another thing that I'm pretty excited about is night photography. So when it comes to film, you know, you don't have too many options in the higher ISO range um, for color film. Um, you know, you've got the 500T stuff, you've got the Cinestill film, you've got Portra 800, Lomo 800, and I might be missing something else out there, but I think that's about it. Um, when you have a digital camera, of course, you've got unlimited options when it comes to your ISO setting. Very modern digital cameras now can let you push the ISO as much as you want. And there's a freedom to that, you know? There's a freedom to being able to just pick whatever ISO you want and getting the shot that you want. I think ultimately that's the one thing that digital kind of gives an edge over film. And that's that with digital, you theoretically have a better chance of getting the exact shot you want. Again, this can be argued just like a lot of the other points that I'm making here, but all I know is that if I'm in the street and you know I want a fast enough shutter speed to be able to capture something that's happening, um, I can bump on my ISO and not have to worry as much. Um, it's something that is a bit harder to do. Of course you can push film, but some people don't like pushing film. Some people don't know how to push film. Some labs charge you extra money to push film. 
you know, it's kind of this never ending cycle of potential issues. So I've done it before and I love shooting film at night and I'm not gonna stop doing that. But I just wanna say that modern cameras give you a lot of freedom when it comes to night performance. So I'm excited to give that a go. And I'm definitely gonna be comparing a lot of that here on this channel, because I think that's one of the things that people would really kind of benefit from using digital cameras. And a lot of you probably haven't tried that and I think you should. So we're gonna look at that at some point, but I think that's probably the last kind of very big reason why I'm excited to start messing around with digital cameras. So what do you think? Are you convinced? Should you start using more digital cameras now that the cost of film is gonna keep increasing? Of course we have black and white film, which doesn't seem to be budging on price much, but the color stuff is just gonna keep going up and up and up. What do you wanna eat for dinner? Ah, you can't handle the truth, huh? Okay, okay, fine. Film is life. 